Hey guys, and welcome to another video. This time we're going to talk about Housebroken's third episode titled Who's Wild? Uh, this is an episode where Honey invites a wild raccoon uh, to enter the group after discovering him picking through her owner Jill's trash. But uh, he doesn't, he, he kind of doesn't fit in because, you know, all those animals are more domesticated. You know, I mean, to be honest, like, even the gray one, Lyle, like, he, he's, like, in the middle, but, like, he's more leaning towards domesticated, but, like, this raccoon's, like, totally wild, and, like, like, it just causes differences between the whole group. And then, on the side, you have an, uh, another subplot where Tabitha decides to, uh, go more into being a natural cat, uh, after, after, uh, like, the raccoon tells her something, I think. So, to be honest, uh, this episode was fine, it, it, was, it wasn't great, it, it wasn't as good as last week's, but, I mean, I didn't think last week's was great either, it was just good, but, this one's a little bit of a downturn from last week, uh, well, one, because it's not that funny, and then two, I also didn't really think it, uh, any of the plot was really going anywhere until maybe like the last five minutes when it actually does something interesting and I'm just gonna get this uh, straightforward I, I didn't think that Tabitha uh, trying to be a cat was interesting because like uh, it felt kind of like a ripoff of like Tom and Jerry or the Looney Tunes cartoons with Tweety and Sylvester the cat where like Sylvester's trying to get Tweety and then Tweety is smarter than Sylvester, so he always outsmarts uh, him every time. And it was the same thing with that bird who outsmarted Tabitha, only it's not as funny. So th that was pretty much my takeaway on it. Uh, and then she gets stuck in a tree and her owners rescue her. And then that's pretty much it. It's, it's nothing to write home about. It's just there, just to be there, I guess. But it wasn't good. Uh, the main was better. I liked. I I I thought the raccoon joining the group was okay, but I could kind of see like, kind of in there that he was kind of sus already, mainly because well he has the mask over his eyes, and then also, also you could already tell, uh, by telling those animals to get wild, um, he he definitely has ulterior motives, and it's shown when, uh, him and Lyle form a quote unquote friendship, and and they hang out outside the group, and then, uh, and then because they are fighting, uh, an animal shelter rescues, uh, Lyle, and, and he doesn't come back to the next group session, so then when Elsa's with her owner, uh, where Lyle's at, like, at, I think it's like some kind of fair, uh, she then discovers him, and then, uh, and then, uh, the raccoon tells the group that, uh, they, that um, he got sent there because they were fighting and it, it wasn't really his fault. But then, um, but then Honey says that oh he needs to report it because they're like a family; they care for each other. But obviously the raccoon doesn't see into that, and because of that they kick him out of the group. You don't care about me. You want to tame me. I'm just a test run for another wild animal. <gasps> I I have I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I know your type. Bored house pet, restless. You seemed real disappointed the other night when you saw me. Who were you hoping to see? Power vacuum. Okay, it's time to shine. Ugh, that's enough! I think it's time you leave. Yep, I think you've overstayed your welcome, friend. A real Scotty Con move. I said get out! Okay, I'll show myself to the extra tiny glass door. Window. Ah. Uh. Pew, 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 pew. 
and when, when they kick him out of the group, and it, it's the, it, nothing really happens between that and the part where he somehow comes back. Like it, nothing really happens there. It's nothing really interesting. But but when he does come back, it's it's better because uh, because he kind of tricks Honey by doing a by doing a oh I'm sorry uh, because Honey discovers him stealing food from her house. But then it's uh, all a trick, so the army of raccoons can steal food and surround Honey, but uh, Honey's not scared of them, and she scares them all away. I'm trying, you know, I really am. It's just, I never knew my dad! Yes, it's okay, <laughs> raccoon. I knew I was reaching you. You know, our environment does so much to deter... Jills. Sorry, Poodle. I'm tired of waiting for the bones. It's time for Raccoon to get the meat. Wait a minute. You never wanted my help at all. You just wanted the chicken. That's why you unlatched the tiny glass door. Window, get away from Chill's free-range rotisserie chicken! <laughs> Go ahead. Go on, do it. Taste blood for the first time in your life. And that's pretty much it. It, 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 it was, it got better in the last few minutes, but I wouldn't say it's anything special. I mean, to be honest, this episode was a little bit better than, than the premiere, but not by much. It still lacks laughs, which I think is going to be a problem for this show because, uh, I don't think, I, well, I mean, I mean, with the exception of maybe Duncanville, I don't think any of the new Fox anime shows have gone this long without anything, like, super funny. Well, well I mean, to be honest, uh, Duncanville's second episode is my favorite, so, and that one was generally good, but, uh, but, the, but this second episode of Housebroken doesn't come close to that. And then none, none of these episodes are really doing me much, doing anything to kind of change my perception. I mean, of course, I'm still gonna watch the show, but I'm not. I'm. I'm not really all that into it. I would say it's it's a nice show, but it it it, it has to do more to keep me captivated. It's nice. They're kind of trying to do something. It just didn't really land because. Most of the jokes and the story was unengaging and not very funny, but it, it had some moments. Uh, I liked, uh, I think Bubbles was probably the highlight of this episode because she had some funny lines. I know what this is really about. What? Just because I don't fertilize eggs inside my body doesn't mean I can't do girl talk. No, I'm just trying to shake the group out of their rut. I'd like to shake something into my rut. That's not girl talk. That's not what your mom said last night. <laughs> All right, we're finished here. Is it wet in here or is it just me? We care for you. I don't. I just want to watch you drink my filthy bowl water off the floor. Bubbles! Glug glug, bitch. But overall, again, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I think next week's might be better, but uh, uh, I think it's too hard to predict whether an episode's gonna be good just by reading plot summaries for the show. It's not like The Simpsons or Family Guy where I can instantly predict whether an episode's gonna be good or bad and I'm right like 95% of the time, but with this show, it's really not the case, especially because it only has three episodes. Uh, so, yeah, House Broken's uh, Who's Wild is a fine episode. It's, it's It lacks laughs. It's not very funny. Well, not very funny is lacking laughs. Uh, the story isn't very engaging or interesting to the last few minutes, which I think is a problem for it. But it does have some moments, and uh, I like the last five minutes. So it wasn't bad, but it wasn't like anything spectacular or anything to write home about either. So I wanted to be a little shorter in this video of the house broken since I think these videos are kind of taking a long time for me to make. So I do want to get them out the next day always, but I, I definitely wanted to keep them a little bit shorter. So what did you think about uh, this episode of House Broken? If you maybe you liked it more than me, maybe you hated it for some reason, let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.